Hey guys, it's Alex, and today I have got a top five uh, fall baits for you guys. Um, but it's kind of a weird list because it's a top five plus one, so it's actually six, but that doesn't really matter. But anyway, so we're going to do the plus one first, which is a frog. So uh, late September, early to mid-October, uh, if you have any lakes with grass in them, the grass, that's when it's going to be the most matted. That's when you're going to have those good, solid mats, that stuff I call the cheese. And a great way to catch them and just a super fun way to catch them is on a frog. Um, as the temperatures start to drop and the pressure start to change, those bass are going to start feeding more heavily, so they're going to be more apt to eat the frog good. Because a lot of times, you know, they won't eat the frog good. Um, you have a lot of blow-ups on frogs and a lot of misses. Um, but especially when the water's starting to cool down, the fish are really starting to feed well, and you've got a lot of grass in your area, you want to be throwing a frog. People kind of look over, especially if you don't have a lot of grass on your lakes. But if you're fishing ponds, uh, with any kind of vegetation, moss, uh, weeds, anything like that. If you're fishing lakes or you have to bank fish where there's a lot of weeds like you've been seeing me do for the past few weeks, uh, probably not now anymore, um, but that kind of thing, the frog is a great way to fish that stuff. It's, you know, it's virtually weedless and you can get in those places other people can't get to. You can get those awesome fun blow-ups on the frog. So a frog is kind of my plus one for the top five top six uh, fall fishing baits. So, but let's actually get into the real list. Uh, we're going to go over some baits for the, you know, the top five fall fishing baits. These are all kind of power fishing methods. These are methods that I use that work for me on the lakes around me. But the number one, or, well, number five, but number one on the list, which is number five, but I don't think there's really any particular order, but there kind of is, but that's okay, um, is a small crankbait. So, like a, a small mid-diving crankbait, um, this is a uh, Howler, and this is a Bandit 300. Uh, both these dive like, I think this one dives from like 11 to 12 foot. This one dives like 10 to 12 foot or something like that. But that mid-diving uh, range, small body crankbait, um, is just an awesome way to approach uh, those riprap banks, those chunk rock banks, those transition banks where bass start to transition in the fall. Um, they're going to be feeding up on bait, bait fish, and a lot of the times the water's going to be fluctuating, especially in these TVA lakes around here and these reservoir lakes. As they start to bring the water down, it starts to muddy up the water, so throwing these chartreuse bright colors like can get those fish's attention, and the smallmouth just love colors like this right here, those pink bright colors and so do largemouth, but this is a great way to approach uh, all those different types of banks and that kind of stuff as the water starts to go down and as the bass start to transition. Um, and these kind of go in a sequence of, of early fall uh, to late fall, um, but that is definitely more of an early fall to mid fall kind of bait. Um, <clears throat> my number four is a jerk bait. Um, so, you know, obviously wintertime fishing, um, Fall fishing, cool weather fishing, cool water fishing in general, a jerk bait is a great way to catch them. Um, this is a sup suspending jerk bait. These are duo. This is a duo 120 and a duo 110. Just, there's something about the bait. There's something about the way it works in the water, the way it suspends, uh, the rattling system, the weight transfer system is really, really helpful too. Because a lot of the times, as we start to transition into fall. Um, you know, the wind will start to pick up. You'll have a lot of fronts coming through, cold fronts. So that means there's going to be a lot of weather. It causes windy conditions. And when you've got a good weight transfer system, and especially in a bait like this, it's easier to throw. Um, but yeah, a jerk bait, definitely a suspending jerk bait. Uh, I don't really like a floating jerk bait. I don't really like a sinking jerk bait. I like a suspending jerk bait. So, you know, as that water starts to cool down, pre frontal and post frontal kind of bass fishing, uh, you can jerk, jerk, pause it, and you can leave it sitting there as long as you need to to get a reaction out of that bass. Um, but the color-wise, I'm going to be throwing chrome, I'm going to be throwing clear, just depending on the water clarity, water conditions, the lake you're fishing in. Um, but, you know, your chromes, your chartreuses, and even these ghost kind of colors right here work really, really well. And my number three is a spinnerbait. Um, there have been more big fish caught on a spinnerbait probably than any other bait next to, I'd say a jig. A jig and a spinnerbait are up there for catching big fish. Um, but I love to fish a spinnerbait. Uh, you guys know I like to fish it, especially in the spring, but it's a great fall bait too. Um, this perfectly mimics uh, bait fish. Um, usually, you know, this kind of looks like a small school of bait fish, maybe one, two, three uh, bait fish like that. But I mean, as the fall transition starts to come, the bass start to feed up, get ready for the winter. They're obviously going to be feeding on shad, and if your lake has shad in it, uh, spinnerbait is probably one of the best imitations for that. Um, this is actually a Nichols Pulsator spinnerbait. This is the only spinnerbait I throw. 
Um, literally, there's no other spinner bait in my box. I only throw a Nichols Pulsator. Um, it has just proved itself over and over and over and caught a lot, a lot of big fish for me. But definitely be throwing a spinner bait. Um, you know, this is great for uh, targeting those riprap banks, um, targeting, you know, chunk rock, anywhere that you're going to be throwing the crankbait and even the jerkbait, the spinner bait's also going to work too. But be looking for shad and this great shad imitation. Number two is a swim bait. Oh, you guys know I love to throw big swim baits. Um, this is an 8 inch mag draft and this is a 6 inch mag draft. It's a great way to catch fish in the fall. Um, this is definitely going to catch that bigger than average fish. Uh, maybe not so much for the 6 inch. You're still going to get some, some smaller strikes on the 6 inch, but your big 8 inches are going to you know cater more to that 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 pound range. And as bass start to feed up, they're looking for a big protein rich meal. Um, and if your lake has shad in it, then this perfectly mimics those big thread, like big thread fin shad. They even make these in some bluegill colors. So if you just have bluegill in your lake, that's another great thing to use. Um, so a bluegill color or something like that. But these big swim baits are going to get you that bigger and better than average bite. Um, and you can target all the things you were targeting uh, with the other baits in this list that you can target with these swim baits. But go check out the mag draft if you haven't. I'm not sponsored by Mega Bass, obviously, but I just love the mag draft. It's probably one of my favorite swim baits I have in the boat. Um, the head shimmy is just something crazy on it. So, but a big swim bait. And then my number one, and it was my number one last year, and it's probably going to be my number one. Uh, on forever and that is a Alabama rig. Um, I love throwing an Alabama rig. Um, I've caught a lot of big fish on an Alabama rig, more than I can count. Um, this is just kind of a big fish bait. I mean it's just something, you know, it's, I mean obviously it looks like a big uh, school of shad. I mean you obviously have fat, five shad here in a school. This is obviously as the water starts to cool down, by start to transition if they're feeding on shad this is well, the one thing that you can throw that looks like shad that are balled up and ready to be eaten by a big bass um, this is actually a Nichols um, Alabama rig um, with Nichols heads these are uh, their Nichols swim bait heads with five uh Gamagatsu hooks I think are what in here and but I fished three on the bottom uh, so this will be the way that it comes through the water these three will be on the bottom uh, these are quarter ounce and then I fish um, two uh, screw locks on top. These do not have hooks. These are just dummy uh, because in the state of Tennessee you can only fish three hooks. Um, so I'll fish the three on the bottom because these are usually the low, the lower and the farther back are the ones that are going to get hit by the bass and then these up here are just decoys to help level one, level out the bait so it runs good in the water like this and two, just to fill out the bait. Um, Dad actually prefers to throw blades so if you wanted to you could take these off here and put some blades on here. You can actually buy like these little, uh, the little Nichols blades or you can go out and buy, you know, your, a Colorado blade, a willow leaf blade, whatever you, seems to work in your body of water, whatever color that is, you can fish it on these dummies. Um, but a rig is an awesome way to imitate those uh, balls of bait fish and get some really, really big bites. And plus, you won't catch flare-sized fish because, you know, he's talking about how you look like an idiot throwing an a rig. But hey, you know, I'll just let my a rig video speak for itself. Um, but anyway, guys, as always, thank you for watching. If you got any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. Um, if you're new to my channel, thank you for watching. I don't always look like this. I'm usually out there in the boat, uh, so go check out some more of my videos. Um, but guys, this will probably be the last video you see from me for a couple of weeks. I'm actually going to have surgery. When you see this video tomorrow, I'll probably be in surgery or just getting out of surgery. Um, and then I'll be up on the couch. i got to be in mobile or immobile or non-mobile or whatever it's called for two weeks. Um, and then uh, I go back, get the stitches out. I'm actually getting a screw uh, put in my foot bone that I broke. So uh, I'll be immobile, like I said, for two weeks, and then I'll be in a walking boot, and I should be able to get back on the boat, and I should be able to get on top of those fall transitioning fish and get a lot of good fishing footage for you guys. But as always, thank you for watching. You guys are sweet.